In this video, you will learn a lot of vocabulary and expressions by listening to a native speaker. I'm excited that your favorite native speaker, Drake, is back. We will continue the series of my conversations with real people in Los Angeles. You will listen to Drake describing his new life in Las Vegas. I'm excited to teach you the expressions and vocabulary that he was using so that you can learn to express yourself the same way. You will learn many English expressions that will help you sound more fluent when you speak English. Let's listen to the first part of my conversation with Drake, and then I will come back and I will teach you the expressions that he's using, and I will give you other sample sentences so that you can learn the meaning in different contexts. Hi Drake, good to see you again. Very good to see you, it's been a long time. It has. So you're living in Las Vegas now? Yes, I made the move about a year ago. How come? Uh, so a lot was going on during that time and I decided that it was very expensive to buy a house in California and that's been my goal for a few years now is to buy property. So I want to move out to uh, uh, Las Vegas because it's a lot more realistic out there. Uh, more realistic to buy a house? Yes. And uh, yeah, I've just been working and boxing as a lot of people see now. I've been uh, picked up boxing like uh, almost full time. You look like you're in great shape. I've seen your Instagram. Thank you. Yeah, I've, I've actually taken a little bit of a break, but I'm going to get back to it soon. Why did you choose boxing as opposed to something else? I've always loved boxing since I was a kid. Yeah, oh, yeah? I've always like been a big boxing fan. Um, and then, you know, I've dabbled in it pretty much like you know, for years since I was even a kid. So about mm, two or three years ago, I decided I was going to start taking it more seriously. Boxing is a sport where you can't just dive right into it. Uh, a lot is on the line when you're in competition. So I, I took my time to learn the ins and outs before I started competing. And, uh, you know, it took a lot of time, but uh, I kind of inched my way into it, learned the pad work, the, the, the bag work, everything that goes into it. And, uh, you know, it was it's a journey for sure, but now I'm to the point where I've been competing for about a year. Wow, really? Yeah, so it's been ah, yeah. it's been a journey. That's exciting to yeah. compete. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, adrenaline like no other. Like that's the most adrenaline I've ever felt in my life. Like it's like a high, really. Really? Yeah. Wow. So you get nervous and excited at the same time? Yeah. I, one thing about boxing, like before you go into competition, it's such a unnatural feeling for for people, for humans, to know that you're going to be fighting. So it's just like adrenaline throughout my whole body my whole body is like in a rush um but i have to like try to maintain it and keep like a really level head and like you know be in the moment kind of like a meditation really yeah control my breathing all of that that must help you with other areas of your life I yeah mean, absolutely that skill. well once once i feel like once i started boxing everything else in life became easier really like, oh yeah like i compare everything to now getting punched in the face like <laughs> oh Getting up early, that's not as bad as getting punched in the face. <laughs> like, you know, going to this job interview, not as bad as getting punched in the face. If you can handle that. Yeah, then it, the rest of the world is cake. Yeah. <laughs> so it's disciplining you and making you a stronger person overall. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, that's really cool. Do you miss L.A.? I miss L.A. so much. Really? Yeah. Uh, two of my best friends are still out here. And a lot of my really good friends are out here. So, you know, sometimes in Vegas it's kind of hard. I make friends pretty fast. Uh, that's just something, like, I kind of learned growing up, moving schools a lot. So I've lived there for a year, and I've made a lot of really great friends, but there's only so much friendship you can get in a year. Yeah. And so, like, you know, it feels really good to come back to L.A. and just have those really good, you know, homegrown friends that uh, I grew up with and stuff like that. So. Oh, yeah. First, I'd like to teach you a grammar point that's used for special emphasis. Very good to see you. It's been a long time. It has. Drake said, it's been a long time since we've seen each other. And I said, it has. I'm using the auxiliary verb of the first sentence. It has been a long time. It's been a long time. And I said, it has. Very good to see you. It's been a long time. It has. Let's practice a few more sentences with this pattern. For example, you can say, they've been gone for a long time. And the other person says, they have. Or for special emphasis, they sure have. And we emphasize the auxiliary verb, they sure have. Or we can say, it was cold last night. And what does the other person say? You do it. It was. Or, it sure was. It sure was. 
Let's practice one more sentence. That's a beautiful sunset. And what does the other person say? How do they respond? It is. It is. It sure is. It really is. Okay, let's learn the first expression that Drake used. Let's learn the expression to make a move. I made the move about a year ago. Drake said, I made the move about a year ago. What is the difference between I moved a year ago and I made a move a year ago? If you say I moved a year ago, that simply states that you relocated. There's no special emphasis on decision making or the effort involved in the move. But if we say I made the move a year ago, in this case we are emphasizing the decision making process and the effort involved in the move. Let's look at another example. I'm planning to move to a new city next year for a job opportunity. This describes the physical act of relocating. But let's look at this sentence. I'm considering whether to make a move to a new city for a better quality of life. This refers to the decision to relocate. Let's listen to the way Drake used the phrasal verb to pick up. This meaning has a different meaning from the one that you're probably familiar with, which means to lift. Let's listen to the way Drake used it. I've been uh, picked up boxing like uh, almost full time. Drake said, I picked up boxing almost full time. To pick up something means to start learning or doing something new, often casually or as a hobby. For example, we can say, I'd like to pick up a new instrument. He decided to pick up tennis to stay in shape. Let's learn the expression as opposed to. Let's listen to the way I asked Drake the question. Why did you choose boxing as opposed to something else? I asked Drake, why did you choose boxing as opposed to something else? Why did you choose boxing as opposed to something else? We use as opposed to to show the difference between two things or ideas. It means in contrast to, or rather than, or instead of. For example, we can say, I prefer tea as opposed to coffee. As opposed to staying in a hotel, we decided to rent an apartment. Let's listen to how some other people used it. Where you act as opposed to plan your way to the future. I have doubts about whether the nine month campaign was fueled by authentic anger as opposed to something else. And that prospect might get the energy companies to become part of the solution as opposed to leading the problem. Let's look at the expression pretty much. Let's listen to Drake. I've always like been a big boxing fan um, and then you know, I've dabbled in it pretty much like, you know, for years since I was even a kid. Drake said that he's dabbled in boxing pretty much since he was a kid. When we say pretty much, it means that something is almost completely true or it's very close to being true. We can say, I pretty much finished my work, but I just need to check a few more things. Or, I pretty much know everyone in my neighborhood. Are you finished? Pretty much. Let's learn the expression to dabble in something. Let's listen to the way Drake used it. I've always like been a big boxing fan um, and then, you know, I've dabbled in it pretty much like, you know, for years since I was even a kid. Drake said that he's dabbled in boxing pretty much since he was a kid. To dabble in something means to do something without taking it too seriously or without committing to it fully to do something casually or as a hobby. We can say, I dabbled in painting for a while, but I never took it seriously. Or, she likes to dabble in photography in her free time. She enjoys dabbling in different languages, but she hasn't become fluent in any of them. You can say, I just dabble in it. What do you dabble in? Let's listen to the way some other people used it. I slowly dabbled in it, tried it just a little bit. It was something I always uh, dabbled in, um, you know, while I was in art school. Uh, I wrote about 500 lines of code and dabbled in a million things. Let's learn the expression to dive right into something. Let's listen to Drake. Boxing's a sport where you can't just dive right into it. Drake said, boxing's a sport where you can't just dive right into it. To dive right into something means to start doing something without hesitation, to jump into it, to start doing something with a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm. 
For example, we can say, when I heard about the new project at work, I decided to dive right into it. Or we can say, he's not afraid to dive right into a new adventure. Let's listen to the way some other people use this expression. Thanks for joining me today. And we're gonna dive right into our content right now. In the next video, we'll dive right into that. I would like to dive right into the questions so as not to waste any time. Let's learn the expression, a lot is on the line. Boxing's a sport where you can't just dive right into it. Uh, a lot is on the line when you're in competition. Drake said, boxing's a sport where you can't just dive right into it. A lot is on the line when you're in competition. And this means that if you do something, you risk losing a lot. There are significant consequences if something goes wrong. It's a risk. You risk having something negative happen. For example, we can say, in the championship game, a lot is on the line for both teams. And that means it's a very important game. There's a lot on the line. Or we can say, he knew that a lot was on the line when he made the decision to invest all of his savings in the stock market. Let's learn the meaning of the expression, the ins and outs. So I, I took my time to learn the ins and outs before I started competing. Drake said, I took my time to learn the ins and outs before I started competing. The ins and outs are the details of something, the specific facts or information about something. For example, we can say, before you start the job, you should learn the ins and outs of the company's policies. Or we can say, she's an expert on the ins and outs of baking bread, so she can answer any questions you have. Let's listen to the way some other people used it. But what's most important is that you understand the ins and outs of that process. Because I wanted to know the ins and outs from the best leaders in the market. So I know all the ins and outs of running that business. Let's learn the expression, to inch one's way into something. So I, I took my time to learn the ins and outs before I started competing. And, uh, you know, it took a lot of time, but uh, I kind of inched my way into it. Drake said, I kind of inched my way into it. And that means to make slow and gradual progress towards something, often because it's difficult or it requires a lot of effort. For example, you can say, after years of hard work, she finally inched her way into the top ranks of the company. It took a lot of practice, but he was able to inch his way into mastering the difficult yoga pose. Drake said, everything that goes into it. Let's listen and then we'll learn the meaning. Learn the pad work, the, the, the bag work, everything that goes into it. He said, I learned the pad work, the bag work, everything that goes into it. And that means all the different components, all the different elements and the factors that are involved in a particular job or activity. So if I say, I learned everything that goes into it, that means I have gained a comprehensive understanding of all the different aspects of a particular thing. I've learned everything that goes into it. We can say, he taught me everything that goes into running a successful business. I'd like to learn everything that goes into it. Let's look at the word journey and let's listen to the way Drake used it. It's a journey for sure, but now I'm to the point where I've been competing for about a year. Wow, really? Yeah, so it's been, wow, yeah. it's been a journey. Drake said, it's been a journey. If someone says, it's been a journey, it means they've gone through a significant experience which has involved a lot of ups and downs, a lot of challenges and personal growth. For example, if someone says graduating from college has been a journey, they're talking about years of hard work, academic challenges, personal growth, and other experiences that they have gone through. We can also say starting my own business has been a journey. And that means I have faced many obstacles, many risks, and many personal transformations. It's been a journey. We are happy about where we are today, but it's been a journey. Let's listen to the way some other people used it. It's been a journey for me and it's still, I'm still on that journey. It's been like a journey to learn to stand for myself. It's been a journey at times that's been frustrating. What does it mean when someone says it's like a high? Let's listen to the way Drake used it. Like it's like a high. 
if someone says, I get a high from doing this thing, that means they get a strong sense of pleasure from doing something. To get high is usually associated with drug use. But in this context, it's used to describe something pleasurable or the satisfaction that a person experiences. For example, someone who loves music might say, I get a high from playing the guitar. I get a high from skydiving. It's very exciting. It's dangerous and exciting. I get a high from it. Let's learn these three expressions that Drake was using. A rush, keep a level head, and to be in the moment. Let's listen. My whole body is like in a rush, um, but I have to like try to maintain it and keep like a really level head and like, you know, be in the moment, kind of like a meditation. Let's look at a rush. Drake said, my whole body is in a rush. A rush is a sudden and intense feeling of energy or excitement, and it spreads throughout your body. Usually your heart beats more quickly and your breathing changes and you're very excited. You can also get a rush from drinking coffee. For example, caffeine can give you a rush. Let's listen to how some other people used it. There's an intensity of affection and emotion, a rush. It's the best feeling in the world. Um, it's just a rush. It's a rush. It's a rush. That's what it is. It's good. Very good. Let's learn the expression to keep a level head. My whole body is like in a rush, um, but I have to like try to maintain it and keep like a really level head and like, you know, be in the moment, kind of like a meditation. Drake said that he has to keep a level head when he's boxing. And that means to stay calm, especially in a difficult or stressful situation. For example, we can say, even though she was nervous, she managed to keep a level head during the job interview. She stayed calm. Or we can say, it's important to keep a level head when negotiating a business deal. Do you know the meaning of the expression to be in the moment? My whole body is like in a rush, um, but I have to like try to maintain it and keep like a really level head and like, you know, be in the moment, kind of like a meditation. Drake said that he needs to be in the moment when he's boxing. And that means to be fully present and engaged in the current experience, to not think about anything else, to have no distractions. For example, you can say, I was thinking about work a lot, so I wasn't fully in the moment during my vacation. Let's listen to the way Drake used once. Well, once, once I feel like, once I started boxing, everything else in life became easier. Drake said, once I started boxing, everything else in life became easier. And that means as soon as or when. For example, we can say, once I get a raise, I'll be able to buy a new car. Or he'll be angry once he finds out about it. Let's listen to the way Drake used cake. Going to this job interview, not as bad as getting punched in the face. If you can handle that. Yeah, then the rest of the world is cake. Drake said, if you can handle being punched in the face, then the rest of the world is cake. Usually we say a piece of cake, but Drake shortened it. He just said cake. And that means something easy or effortless. We can say, this test was a piece of cake. Don't worry, it'll be a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. It's really easy. It's a piece of cake. Let's look at the way Drake used the expression, there's only so much. So I've lived there for a year and I've made a lot of really great friends, but there's only so much friendship you can get in a year. He said, I've been living there for a year and I made a lot of great friends, but there's only so much friendship you can get in a year. We can say only so much for non-countable nouns or only so many with countable nouns. And that means there is a limit or maximum amount of something. You can only handle a certain amount of stress or pressure or responsibility. We can say, there's only so much you can do. I can only work so many hours in a day. There's only so much I can do. You can follow Drake on Instagram. His Instagram name is Drake Reyes one You can keep in touch with him that way and you can find out what he's doing. Drake and I recorded some other videos that I will show you in the future where Drake is teaching you a lot of English expressions. 
He's a really good teacher. I know that you're going to learn a lot in those videos and they're coming up in the near future. So make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and hit the notification bell. That way you will find out when the videos are released. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To get the two courses, the American Accent Course and the 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English, go to accurateenglish.com.